Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to yet another episode of Jim's 5am Club. I'm on a bush trail. I left, um, I started the bush trail in North Mead and I've ended up here in Castle Hill. So I'm just going to head back, back down. I've been walking for a couple of hours now. I've done four 5am clubs and now I need to try and find my way back down to where I came from. So this track that I'm on at the moment, this trail, is unmarked. So I'm going to uh, do my best to get down to the bottom there where the creek is. So um, I'll just follow it as best I can. And I think the trail has been generated by the runoff from the rain. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll do a walk and talk like we normally do. And I'll go through a book summary. And the book summary is entitled A Journey of Awakening. Which is an apt title given that we're going on a track, a bush track, coming through a trail here. And uh, I'm not entirely sure that I'm heading in the right direction, but uh, I've got a good feeling that I am. But sooner or later, <laughs> I will experience an awakening either be on my back <laughs> or be joining the track that I first started. I think I'm on the right track. I've got a good feeling. But uh, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful way to start Sunday. I think, yes, I'll just keep on going this way. Yep, yep. I'm confident I'm on the right track. So the author kicks off the book with a, an observation just to put us into the right mood. And he says our spiritual journey is individual and we need to listen to our own truth and that most people don't feel fulfilled with their lives so um, an interesting start to listen to your own truth um, I guess that doesn't really resonate with my Christian beliefs but as I say, my job is to be an emissary and just to reflect what the authors are writing and we'll try and piece it together. But there is only one truth. Uh, so I guess each person has to discover that truth and that oneness, oneness with God. But to uh, listen to your own truth could be a bit tricky because... Uh, we can fool ourselves is the bottom line or the message that I've learnt over the years from my spiritual fathers. So the first formal point to come out of this book is where the author says that meditation is a useful tool that helps you stay grounded in the present and find clarity and balance in your life. Some people depend on meditation but uh, from a Christian perspective, um, prayer is my grounding. But um, once again, we'll just continue with what the author is saying. But every now and then, I'll just drop in and just up try and align it from a Christian perspective as well. Uh, because meditation is something which is outside of the Christian sphere. But uh, prayer is something that we can probably supplement and complement it with. So what the author suggests here is that when you're meditating or when you're in a state of meditation, um, and I can say that probably is appropriate to say that the same thing happens with prayer, with deep prayer and continuous prayer, that you achieve a state of flow. And a state of flow basically suggests that uh, all things just seem to come together and align 
and you get a sense of uh, comfort and fulfillment. Uh, let me just jump over these two logs that are trees that have fallen across the path. A lovely little uh, obstacle course. I'm sure my uh, my granddaughters would enjoy that. So one of the goals is to get into a state of uh, flow or comfort where you're not thinking or worried about the past and certainly not anxious about the future. You're just trying to be one with now. And I guess that's aligned to what Christianity teaches us as well, that um, you know, we need to have faith in God, um, as God will provide, and that your key, key mission in life is to serve God, but to serve God now, not in the future and not in the past, but to continually serve God and to express gratitude and thanks and to do the things that are God pleasing. So the author then says something which is beautiful and I love and it resonates deeply with my Christian beliefs that ego becomes our prison. Um, ego becomes a prison which forces us if you are egotistical and you're all about yourself it forces us to view the world through the windows and wants and it uh, forces us to stay within the familiar and comfort zones of our lives because it's all about us we don't want to feel discomfort, so ego, according to the author, is a prison which locks us up and doesn't allow us to expand, to grow, develop and to become the person that we were meant to be. Because when you're egotistical, your thoughts are limited. And the reason why they are limited and they are limiting is that it's all about you and not about reality. Because each and every one of us are not the centre of the universe. Um, and the author makes this very, very clear. Um, because we generate irrational fears, uh, confirmation biases, and uh, we live... Um, live a life of folly and the author says that awareness only comes and awareness is relative and if we change the way we see the world the world is becomes different and it becomes better so it's all about embracing the differences in life and to try and become one with, uh, with nature, one with God. And the second formal point to come out of this book is that the author says that uh, we need to find the best form of medication for you and to incorporate the, the techniques that will help us concentrate and evolve as people, as individuals, and that comes through practice. And my spiritual father also reminds me of this, that prayer is not natural. It needs to be practiced. We need to focus on our prayer and try and eliminate distractions, the many distractions around us. So the author here, once again focusing on meditation, says that there are many different forms of meditation. I wasn't quite aware of this. I thought there was just a key form of meditation practiced by the East. But it says there are different forms of med meditation depending on your needs. Uh, there is stillness where you can just sit there and be still. Um, there is breathing exercises that you can do to calm you down. There is Tai Chi. You can sing, you can dance. But the most important thing 
is what your mind is doing, not your body. I've got some people coming up the hill here, so let me just get a little bit further back and let them pass, and I can continue my chit chat, and we'll see where it leads us. So the more, most important thing is what your mind is doing and not your body, according to the author. So the call to action from this author is to commit, to commit for two weeks, um, to fight your ego and try mindful breathing. And dare I say, try, try also um, um, purposeful prayer if you're a Christian. So I'm getting to the bottom of this hill now. So let me keep on going down and make sure I don't tumble bum over tit. So there's a call to action for two weeks to try doing something uh, on a continual basis in a purposeful way to help you concentrate and focus on the now. And uh, you can do a number of different things. Uh, I'll choose to continue to practice my prayer. The third point to come out of this book is where you need to run, uh, you need to be wary that you may run into ego traps. We are all subject to running into ego traps and to understand and appreciate it and to be on guard for it, I guess is the key point from the author. So, um, so try mindful, uh, try, uh, so if you really want freedom from your ego, you just need to keep on going. Uh, the key is to stop following disempowering thought patterns. Because uh, we all have thought patterns. Some are good and some are bad. So the author here is encouraging us to um, disengage from the disempowering thought patterns. And the author here says another thing, which I uh, haven't heard before, but it makes, makes perfect sense, and that we should try and avoid, where possible, a thing called spiritual pride, where we become self-righteous. And that self-righteousness gets in the way of our compassion. It's a, it's a powerful point. It's something worth considering something worth thinking about because you do find that sometimes we get on our moral high horses and make statements and do things uh, not realizing that we're hurting people by doing and saying what we're saying and it's something that we may want to um, um, temper where possible and manage because it. Um, it does work and can work against us and make us less compassionate than what we could be and what we should be. So uh, it's important to achieve a level of liberation from our ego and from our uh, spiritual pride so that we can do the work uh, that we need to do in order to to contribute to the world around us in a way which is God-pleasing. And the next point that the author makes is a very valid point, that we need to be careful that we don't get trapped. We don't get trapped by complacency. You know, I'll do it tomorrow, it's all okay, doesn't impact me. You know what I'm talking about. We become complacent and too comfortable in our lives. And that in itself can cause us problems later on. So uh, as we said, and as my friend Johnny D always says, we just need to keep on going. Just keep on moving along and practicing the things that we learn. Um, because knowledge is great. But knowledge in itself is irrelevant unless it's applied knowledge. So we need to be applying it in our daily lives to uh, improve our station in life 
and also to help improve other people's station in life. So the key message once again is to just keep on practicing, keep on sticking to the things that uh, improve and make you a better person. And by doing these sorts of things, the author suggests that our, our perspective will grow, will change, will alter and improve in ways that will, uh, will help us in many ways. And um, the other thing that the author talks about here is that once you get to a certain point, um, you will learn, let me just get up here, just bear, bear with me, you will learn and reason, uh, you'll learn to understand that the things that used to be exciting in your life, the partying, the gambling, the uh, material things, will slowly become less exciting and bland. So uh, another powerful point to consider. Okay, so I've come to a crossroad here. I think I just need to keep on going. Yes, there I am. I need to keep on going along the platypus walk. I guess next time I'll take that direction up there to see where it leads us. But uh, today I've, we're doing the platypus track. I think last, last week I did the bandicoot track and the two feet track. But it's, it's great that this walking trail is, um, is well signed. So if you stick to the trail that you're on, then you're virtually assured that uh, you won't get lost <laughs> unless you become adventurous like I am and sometimes go off on another track. Here we have a tree which has come down in a storm. Let me just put my notes in my pocket and prepare to cross over. It could be a little tricky. I'll just grab onto this tree to get down. Just bear with me. I'll just get over this tree here safely and then finish off this vlog. So uh, as you can see, a massive, massive tree has come down across the creek. So let's see if I can traverse it without injuring myself. But it smells beautiful. This tree will be here for years unless they, the council comes and cuts it. But it is one of the obstacles that make bushwalks so interesting and so daring. So take care, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jim's 5am Club. Spread the word because I have a huge, a massive library of material that I've been able to generate over the past year, year and a half during the COVID lockdown, where I've presented book summaries, OPE, other people's experience. And I've been able to do it with a backdrop of uh, the wonderful city of Sydney. Or and uh, it's my daughter calling, so I'll finish up now and call her back. But uh, everything's going well. We're in, uh, we've hit 80% um, and slowly our economy here in New South Wales will start to build and we'll be in a better place. Anyway, take care and um, probably got another hour of walking. So it'll be a three hour walk all up and we'll see where it leads us. So take care and bye for now. And I look forward to coming to you again from a different location with a different message of empowerment where we join each other and become partners in each other's growth and development. Yes, us take care and bye for now.